do whatever happens, whatever it takes. This week on At The Movies, Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman star in the epic Australia. This child is a blessing to the both of us. Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon are forced to go home for the holidays in four Christmases. I've had an idea for an interview. Richard Nixon. From the director of Apollo 13 and A Beautiful Mind, we've got... And Jason Statham returns the action thriller Transporter 3. Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman fall in love in the midst of turmoil down under. I'm Ben Lyons from E! Entertainment. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz from Turner Classic Movies. First up, director Baz Luhrmann's two-hour, 35-minute Australia. The story of Lady Sarah Ashley, played by Nicole Kidman. She's an English aristocrat, childless, living alone while her husband tends to their cattle ranch in the remote Northern Territory of Australia. Convinced he's cheating on her, she leaves to confront him, only to discover he's been murdered. Thus begins the first part of this epic, a fish-out-of-water story where prim and proper Lady Ashley tries to cope with the rough, rugged world of pre-World War II Australia. Here, she meets the drover, Hugh Jackman, who defines rough and rugged, a cattle driver. Mr. Drover. Yeah? There's only one tent. That's right. For the four of us. Well, we're not really used to... Uh... A woman. I suppose you think I should be back in Darwin at the church fete or the ladies, uh, whatever you call it. Well, I will have you know that I am as capable as any man. Together with an unbelievably cute orphaned half-aboriginal, half-white child played by Brandon Walters, they must drive the cattle across some of the roughest land in the world. Bring the horse. You can't be serious. Bring the horse. Well, this should be interesting. Raw! What are you Shoot. doing? Shoot! Raw! 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 Move it, move it, move it. They're going the wrong way. That's the second part of the film, the traditional Western, complete with a saloon brawl, a stampede, and evil poachers. And it all leads to the third part of the movie, the romantic war film. So it is an epic, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good. Australia is overly long, contains entirely too much aboriginal mysticism, which feels contrived and condescending. There must be five or six shots of Hugh Jackman in slow motion. I get it. He's the sexiest man alive. And finally, it lacks subtlety. In one touching scene, Lady Ashley tries to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow to the little boy. But then Lerman takes us back to the song four or five more times. Look, there's a lot to admire here, but not enough. And Ben, I'm going to have to say skip it. I agree. I'm going to have to say skip Australia. It's trying so hard to be epic instead of just being epic. Yeah. It's reminding us that this is a sweeping romance for the ages, a throwback to old Hollywood. And like you said, the, the montages of Hugh Jackman on the horse in slow motion over no. and over again. Yeah. I get it. I get he's it. The he's the sexiest he's man hunky. alive. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure women will fall in love with him through this movie. And his chemistry is very good with Nicole Kimmon. But it felt like two separate movies. I think I would have liked the first movie a lot better. Just the cattle driving movie. And then end it. But it goes on for an hour. There is much that good about it. As I said, just not enough. Uh, it looks really beautiful. Yeah, the Lerman landscapes of Australia are absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you're going to talk about Oscars here, you might be talking about a cinematography Oscar. I mean, in the tradition of sort of John Ford using Monument Valley and David Lean films, it does look great. It is sweeping. The land becomes a character. But again, the great thing about those movies were that you cared more and believed more about the characters. I thought they failed in that regard here in Australia. And that's the thing with Baz Luhrmann. He hasn't really worked since doing Moulin Rouge. He's directed Nicole Kidman in some perfume commercials. But I'm talking about creating yeah, right. character and story. And yes, visually it looks fantastic. The costumes are great. But when it gets down to it, it's the story and the characters that really just don't bring this thing Real together. Real quick, one character that bothered me in particular, the, uh, the bad guy, Neil Fletcher, played by David Wenham. He did a fine job, but the character is so evil as to stop being believable. And I think that was a significant flaw. So we agree. It looks great, but for just under three hours, we got to get some story in there as well. Action star Jason Statham is back. He's back transporting in Transporter 3. This is Statham's third turn as mercenary Frank Martin, who specializes in delivering precious cargo, including people for a price. As always, he delivers when it comes to the physical nature of the role. Several of the action sequences are first rate, as you can see in this scene. I'll give you five seconds to remove your hand. Ah! 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 
But like Australia, it's the story, or lack thereof, that makes this the worst of the Transporter series. And your name is? What matters my name? We're sitting here in a car with two exploding bracelets on our wrist going to the same place. I would call that being in the same situation. It's not. They are going to kill you. That's Valentina, poorly and painfully played by Natalia Rudakova. She's the cargo being transported this time, and she and Frank are cuffed with bracelets that, get this, will explode should they roam more than 75 feet from Frank's beloved car. But to the movie's credit, the film knows what it's trying to be. It's a cheap Bond or Jason Bourne knockoff. But in the end, Transporter 3 is really just a mindless, silly waste of time. I do look forward to seeing Jason Statham evolve into more than just the brutish action star that he has become. I'm saying to skip Transporter 3. You know, Ben, I disagree with a lot of what you said. I, I'm also going to say skip this movie, but it was much closer for me, and there was a lot that I liked here, and I had less problems with the characters and more trouble with the actual action, which felt really antiseptic to me. A lot of scenes with eight guys taking their turns running at Jason Statham instead of all coming at him at once. But significantly, no blood, no pain. This movie felt scaled back to get a PG-13 rating. And that made it... scaled that back made it... about an Audi on top of a train and him flying through the window and kicking someone in the face. Yes, it wasn't bloody, but it was stylized and it was somebody cool in the action. face and they don't bleed, I don't believe it. That's what I'm saying. And so it lost what even the limited credibility it strives for, it lost. I don't know how you didn't have a problem with Natalia Rudakova. She's one of the worst actresses I've seen on screen in a long time. I won't disagree with you about her, but as always, I think Jason Statham is actually a top-notch actor. We see that in the bank job. I mean, he does quiet and menacing very effectively. He makes bald bold, which is impressive. But for every um, bank job, there's a death race in a Transporter 3, and I think he needs to balance it out or sure. move more in the direction of bank job. Robert can do it. Robert Nepper, who plays the bad guy uh, from Prison Break, people might remember him. I think he's got a long career ahead of him playing these types of roles. I thought Statham was excellent. I thought Nepper was excellent. Uh, and I think it just needed a tiny bit more to get over the top. It's a nice commercial for Audi, though. You have to admit, right? <laughs> it is a nice commercial. Coming up next, two major movies garnering Oscar buzz. First, the powerful interview that exposed the president. It's Frost Nixon, and we've got an early review. Plus, Sean Penn fights for his rights in milk. We're going to beat this thing. We need everyone. The American people need a conviction. I'd like to give Richard Nixon the trial he never had. Democracy depends on it. We're not going to let that happen. We're going to make them choke. Director Ron Howard has made some great movies, but his adaptation of Peter Morgan's play Frost Nixon, which is based on actual events, is quite possibly his finest. It opens in limited release next week. This is an early review. Frank Langella, who played Nixon on Broadway, here reprises his role as the 37th president. The year is 1977, three years after Nixon's resignation. The former president is earning money speaking at insurance conventions in Houston, but he has not done a big interview. And for more than half a million dollars, he agrees to sit down with David Frost, played by Michael Sheen, best known for his memorable work as Tony Blair in The Queen. Frost was a huge television personality in Australia and England. The question, over many days of interviews, could Frost get Nixon to admit breaking the law in Watergate? It does not start off well for him. After the taping finished, I overheard two members of the crew say they never voted for him when they had the chance. But if he ran for office again today, he'd get their support. You're making him look presidential for sake. And forget about the trivia, David. Who cares whether Nixon took the White House bed to Europe when he traveled? I do. Well, it's irrelevant. That's for... Sam Rockwell as James Reston Jr., a New York Times reporter, helping Frost prepare for the interview. But initially, Nixon's skill in controlling the conversation overwhelms the overmatched Frost. But it starts to turn around for Frost, whose goal is less the truth than keeping his struggling career afloat, during a strange late-night phone call from Nixon before their final interview session. Except only one of us can win. Yes. And I shall be your fiercest adversary. I shall come at you with everything I got. Real tension builds through the film and through the interview, leading to a number of dramatic exchanges. Are you really saying that in certain situations, the president can decide whether it's in the best interests of the nation and then do something illegal? I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. 
It's adapted from a play, but Ron Howard gives it a full cinematic feel. I think it's a terrific film, Ben. I say see it. You know, oftentimes I feel like films are too narrow in their scope or too introverted, and they don't open it up to the rest of the world. But that's what I loved about this film. It balanced the two sides of the interview between David Frost's camp and Richard Nixon's camp. And I like seeing Diane Sawyer in there, played yeah. by uh, Kate Jennings Grant. Yeah. But I, have, I agree. This is a great film. You have to see it. And it's up on uh, maybe on my best of the year list. I know we're not done with 2008 yet, but it, it's right there. It's very well done. You know, I think Frank Langella is probably going to get an Oscar nomination for this, and, and deservedly so. But actually, I thought Michael Sheen stole the show here. I, I think it's a tougher role to play. Uh, and I just, man, I thought he nailed it. I just empathized with him. Everything seemed authentic. Everything seemed true. His sort of running the gamut of emotions, trying to save his career, trying to do the right thing, trying to impress people he knew were smarter than he was. I think everybody can relate to it and sort of that gearing up for a big moment in your career and the preparation that goes into it in the night before. And they really capture the humanity in that. And they did take some creative license sure, with the sure. historical moments in this. I know that the, the fourth and final interview wasn't about Watergate. It was one of the ones in the middle and they made that happen for the film and that's okay but I thought Ron Howard did a wonderful job uh, and arguably his best work. You know Ben even if you don't like politics even if you don't know anything about these interviews I actually don't think it matters. This is a dramatic film and I think you enjoy it just flat out if you like movies. From one Oscar contender to another our next movie is Milk starring Sean Penn as the title character Harvey Milk an openly gay politician who was the first to bring gay rights issues to the national stage. This is our lives we're fighting for. You get the first bullet the minute you stand at the microphone. You don't have to go up there. All men are created equal. No matter how hard you try, you can never erase those words. Make and I reviewed Milk on last week's show. It opens in limited release this weekend. We both say to see it. You know, I look forward, Ben, to uh, an Oscar race that could well include uh, Sean Penn, could well include Frank Langella, could well include uh, Michael Sheen. And uh, it's a, a sort of, that could be a heavyweight battle. Uh, Sean I, Penn is... James Franco in this too. Don't forget about him role, in the sure. supporting role. Uh, yeah. uh, Sean Penn, terrific as Harvey Milk. An important film, I think, to uh, uh, alert people that the gay rights issues, that some of which are, are still going on now, we look back. 30 years yeah. and see that some of these That's debates were so powerful about still this going film on. is that yeah. some of the issues that Harvey Milk addresses are still so relevant to the world in which we live today. A great soundtrack, a wonderful supporting performance from Emil Hirsch. Yeah, the he's moment great. he comes on screen, he just injects the film with so much life. And I think everybody knows this, but it is another reminder that Gus Van Zandt, the director, uh, you know what, knows what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, coming up next, it's the least wonderful time of the year for Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn in Four Christmases. I love that photo. You look huge. No flights are coming in and no flights are going out. This isn't happening. Do you have a sister airline? No, I'm sorry. How about a cousin airline? No, we don't. How about like an airline that your airline's felt up before? Our next movie is Four Christmases. It's the latest manufactured romantic comedy for the holidays that stars Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn as a couple whose romantic trip to Fiji is canceled. So they're forced to celebrate Christmas with, of all people, their families. Each one's folks are divorced, so things get a little complicated. And guess what? Oh. Their families are dysfunctional. Oh, the hilarity of hating your family at the holidays. Dad, um, this is my Aunt Sarah. This is my Hi. Aunt Donna. Genuine leather. Oh, really and nice to that, meet you, uh, ladies. That cute oh, little canary so down there hanging on your belt is Grim Grim. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Grim Grim, but that's my belt. That's attached to me. I'm sorry. Merry Christmas to you. It's a great sweater. <laughs> I get it. Vaughn's semi-professional ultimate fighting brothers are played by country star turned actor Tim McGraw and Vaughn's frequent collaborator and best friend John Favreau, who thankfully is in this movie because he provides some of the film's few laughs. These boundaries are not to be crossed. And if they are crossed, there's going to be real consequences to that. Thank you. Oh, oh, More awkward moments of family embarrassment follow until it's off to Christmas's number three and four. You get the idea. Vaughn is funny at times, but he's not really acting here. He's just playing Vince Vaughn. 
Witherspoon, however, looks like she can't keep up with his improv and his comedic timing. I never really felt their chemistry on screen. After all the gags and silly one-liners, their relationship is the core of this movie, and it's just not there. Skip four Christmases. Yeah, you're entirely too harsh on this movie. It's like you were persuaded by what is maybe the worst trailer I've ever seen. That said, I am also going to say skip it, but I like it much better than you, and it, again, like Transporter 3, was right on the edge for me. But it didn't get over the edge. No, you have to admit, the, the chemistry on screen is just not there. I agree with you on the chemistry. I thought he was typically Vince Vaughn. I like the character. I think people like the character. I think Vince Vaughn fans will like this movie. Uh, I think you're right. She may not have been the right choice. John Favreau steals it. John Favreau is a joke in this movie. He's terrible. He's great in the movie. No, he plays an ultimate not... fighter, and he's very funny. You say I'm expecting too much in this film. Ben, it's got five Oscar winners. John Voight, Robert Duvall, Mary Steenburgen, Reese Withers, but it's one after another. Here. I don't think anybody thinks this film was going to win an Oscar I'm when they signed on to win an do Oscar, it. But I want a good romantic comedy, and this isn't that. I understand what it's trying to be, but it's just not that funny, except for those Favreau scenes, which I got into. One line from Robert Duvall, I think, tells the story that this movie is fairly funny, at least in parts. He says, "I don't want to speak ill of your mother on Christmas, but your mother is a common street whore." <laughs> Any movie that has that line is okay with me. Again, didn't quite get over but the you're hump. Still saying to skip. It, because it was a little too silly and that scene you see in the trailer where the satellite dish gets pulled off the wall and everybody falls down and jumps on each other and the wrestling and the ultimate fighting nonsense embarrassing big waste of time but there were moments of true comedy there and uh, so again Sounds comes close like not enough moments for us well coming up next it's one of the best documentaries of the year but it won't get its shot at the oscar we'll talk about it in our dvd out now he looks like magic johnson that's what my mom says like today, not when he was thin and good looking. <laughs> We're so such a conservative town, and I'm so not conservative. Turn it up, man, turn it up! Most people around here just stay, you know, in Indiana. That doesn't sound great to me. Now it's time for our DVD Out Now list, and my DVD pick this week is American Teen. It was one of my favorite documentaries of the year, but for some reason, it's not on the short list for Oscar nominations. Go figure. It's directed by Nanette Burstein, whose previous work includes the great documentary, The Kid Stays in the Picture. This time, she tackles the life of some high school kids in rural Indiana. It's refreshing to see a group of kids who are just like all of us, with problems and zits and going through all the complications of growing up in America. I promise you that if you give the film a chance, you'll become enveloped in these kids' lives, you'll feel connected to them. It's a very emotional film and a great documentary. Check out American Teen. Sometimes choosing a DVD release to recommend is tough. And then sometimes, you get to recommend one of the greatest films of all time. The Ultimate Collector's Edition of Casablanca has a 48-page book, a feature on Warner studio mogul Jack Warner, and commentary from Roger Ebert. His commentary on this movie equals his wonderful work on Citizen Kane. Also included, of course, the actual movie Casablanca, which is impossible not to enjoy no matter how many times you've seen it. And also out now on DVD, the blockbuster Hancock starring Will Smith and Charlize Theron. Want to know what you can't miss this weekend? Well, stay tuned for my three to see. I went on the show because I thought she'd be watching. Closed captioning for At The Movies is sponsored by... What makes a Hershey's bar pure? Pure togetherness. Pure enjoyment. Pure delicious chocolate. Pure Hershey's. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. Okay, let's recap the movies on this week's show. Both of us say skip Australia, and you can also skip Transporter 3, though Ben disliked it more than I. You should see Frost Nixon, and we agree you should see Milk. And we both say skip four Christmases, though, again, Ben disliked it more than skip I did. Skip in theaters, but if you're stuck on an airplane, then I guess maybe watch it to stay awake. Meng just told you the movies we reviewed this week, but out of all the films in theaters right now, here are the three that you have to see. At number three, it's Bolt. It's more than just an animated film for kids. It's a smart, funny, endearing story of a canine voiced by John Travolta, who thinks the superpowers he has while acting on a TV show exist in real life. Miley Cyrus voices Penny, a young girl who Bolt travels cross-country to save, or so he thinks. Great in 3D. My number two film this week, Slumdog Millionaire, from director Danny Boyle. 
I absolutely loved it. It's great when a film comes from nowhere, slips in under the radar, and has the entire industry buzzing. This is that movie. And at number one, it's Milk, the story of Harvey Milk, directed by Gus Van Sant. The entire cast, including Emile Hirsch, Josh Brolin, Diego Luna, and Allison Pill, round out a powerful film that tells the story of a unique American whose views and beliefs are very relevant today. Yeah, I love Milk, and there's a lot of terrific movies uh, on the horizon. Best time of the year. That's it for now. Remember, though, we are always online at AtTheMoviesTV.com. We'll leave you with a look at movies coming up on our next show, and until then, we'll be at the movies. And life is alive. You sing the blues, you'll have to live with it. What do you know? White boy. My Bliss? New Bliss Tech's Deep Renewal, the clinically proven anti aging lip treatment with Q10. Discover Bliss, discover Bliss Tech's. On December 2nd, return to the magic of Narnia. It's time for fun! The family movie of the year. Narnia, Prince Caspian, the perfect holiday gift. Own it on Disney DVD and Blu ray. Did you know Santa had a brother? Come on! This holiday season, embrace the brother of all family comedies, Fred Claus. Now on Blu-ray and DVD. The rhinovirus, a leading cause of the common cold. Why just cover up the symptoms of your cold when you can get over your cold faster with Zycam?